Hello good people and welcome. Now, if you're somebody with an existing Airbnb apartment that perhaps you're looking to rejuvenate a little bit for the sake of better returns, or you're at the very start of your design journey and you're looking to understand how to maximize the potential of your space, well this is the perfect video for you. I'm Jordan from The Britalian Job and I have over 8 years experience between the UK and Italy designing, renovating and managing successful short-term rental apartments. Over the last three to four years, I've been consolidating this experience in the beautiful Tuscan city of Florence. And what makes today's video particularly interesting and I think engaging for you too, is that we're going to be sharing with you our real life upcoming renovation design plan for a grand palatial apartment which is located in the heart of this city. In this video, we'll be moving from room to room, showing you the before and after of how it currently stands and what our 3D generated ambition of each of these spaces will be. And hopefully along the journey, you can learn a few things too. We begin by transitioning from the inherited floor plan to our 3D model. And by the way, this was all made quite easily with a free program and I'll be sharing how I did it in an upcoming video. Now, with two months of planning under our belt, we decided to split this apartment into three, all fed from this shared corridor. Before we jump into the design specifics, here's a little tip. Ask yourself, what can you do with these spaces to make them competitively designed? In this case, while two of the guest apartments will be quite similar in size, the third will have an additional terrace, bathroom, bedroom and that historic ceiling fresco. If we pull off a great design in this larger apartment, not only can we target it at a higher end of the market, but from a design perspective, it's going to force us to work twice as hard as we try to give these other apartments unique selling points to compete with it. In fact, we pulled off this little trick with a space that we renovated in 2020, which was a smaller space competing against a neighbouring apartment of ours, again with a gorgeous Italian ceiling fresco. But by focusing on a luxury finish in the bathroom, or of course actually done on a shoestring budget, we created a unique selling point out of nothing. I mean, just look at that bath situation. And it turned out to be a hugely successful space in its own right. So challenge yourself to outdo your best potential competitors, whether it's between your own spaces or by looking at your local market. Designing from this perspective, you'd be surprised at what creative ideas you'll come up with, even if the space you're working with is smaller or less beautiful. But it's time for the fun part, guys. And without further ado, we'll begin with one of the two smaller guest apartments. And so, with the aforementioned challenge in mind, we'll be selecting the lounge as the main space where we'll be investing most of our creative energy to design a uniquely marketable space. Zooming in, you'll notice that the soon-to-be lounge enjoys a fairly decent size, given that it's located in the city centre, but as you'll see as we transition into the layout plan, a huge amount of usable space can be squeezed out of it. In fact, we gain a large sofa bed, two designer armchairs, an intimate dining area for two, and direct access to the kitchenette. A great way of framing your design choices is to think about what layout and aesthetic would make for a single, gorgeous, unmissable title image that you'll be able to take at the end of your renovation. Because of course, this one picture will determine how high your click-through rate is when your property is shown to prospective holidaymakers. A signature unique looking chandelier will be chosen to create a wow moment as guests arrive, while most of the furniture will be antiques or second-hand pieces bought economically at local thrift stores. This will all come together to give the space much more of an expensive and boutique-y sense than what the furnishing price tag will actually be. And take it from me, guests can always tell if your apartment is fully decked out with brands like IKEA. So I highly recommend this approach to give some local character to at least some of your principal pieces of furniture. Now onto the kitchenette, designed to be small but mighty and taking inspiration from these finishes. The size of your kitchen will effectively dictate how long guests can comfortably stay, and for this apartment we are targeting city getaways, where the stays are usually short. As we move away, you will briefly see the marked electrical work that we have planned to conform to our design. Reversing along this blank canvas of a corridor, we arrive at what will become the bedroom. Now, realistically, choices are going to have to be made about which rooms you prioritise with your budget, and so with this honest assessment in mind, we intend to dress this room in a simple, yet elegant, and more importantly, a cost-effective aesthetic. In my experience, so long as you have a clean and comfortable bed, no one will ever complain about your bedroom. Finally, we shift across to the admittedly quite small bathroom, and as the kitchenette destines the type of guest and length of stay that will be booked, we can get away with a smaller size. 
But a common theme with my advice to you guys is that design can always overcome size, with just a few examples here demonstrating this perfectly. Turning our attention now to the second smaller guest apartment, I want to talk about some of the challenges we face when carving out new spaces from nothing. As I'll delve into in a minute, the kitchenette and bathroom shown here don't even currently exist. Zooming in, the front door from the shared corridor opens right into the lounge area. And transitioning across, you'll notice a new opening that will create to poach an unused part of the shared corridor to become a private space for this apartment, to be used as the kitchenette. The more compact size of the space, albeit enlarged by the addition of an open plan style kitchenette, makes designing an inviting space here a bit more challenging. For example, Another variant of this design is to narrow the kitchenette opening so as to allow the dining area to be placed by the much brighter window area. To me, I'm not sure I like how much this then cramps the bottom wall, but I'd love to know your thoughts on which option you'd recommend and why in the comments below. Because we aren't able to put a corridor in this space, we need to keep the main walkways clear, which further limits our design choices. Looking now at the bedroom doorway, it's revealed through this next transition that we are cannibalizing much of its space in order to insert both this and the neighboring guest bathrooms. This otherwise quite large room reverts to a medium-sized city bedroom. But this compromise solves one of the greatest puzzles which face any renovation, the limitations of plumbing. Zooming out, you'll see the marked location of the wastewater pipe of the building, to which all toilets will need to connect. These pipes are large and need to be inclined to a certain degree underneath the floor, meaning that there's a very limited radius by which this toilet system can actually be extended to new bathrooms. In this way, while it's a pity to shrink down the size of an already small guest apartment, decisions like this sometimes have to be made. And so, this does leave us with what is admittedly the less premium of our three holiday rental apartments, but that's okay. This will encourage us to take joy in hunting for those special little touches when decorating the space to elevate it as much as possible. One fun idea of ours actually is to explore if we can use stucco in the curved ceilings with some ornate finishes like these, which could be a really classy way to help that final title image stand out from the crowd when it comes to listing. And last, but certainly not least, we have the jewel in the crown of this entire project and the perfect case study of all the design tricks you can play to aim for that lucrative luxury end of the Airbnb market. To begin, we'll be zooming into the main fresco room via the small entrance lobby, with this space set to become the kitchen and lounge. Before sharing the plan, a quick shout out to our subscriber, Fabio Santaniello, who pointed out in the comments section of our last video that the figures are likely the famous Athena and Urania, the great-granddaughter of Uranus. Now, this isn't our first rodeo when it comes to renovating historical spaces, and we learned a lot from the design of our previous apartment, where we found that it was key to allow the fresco to remain centre stage by keeping the walls and furniture simple, yet elegant. And so, without further ado, let's begin by looking at what will become of the kitchen, with the cabinetry coming from IKEA, the Italian marble tops direct from a local quarry, and the metalware from various independent vendors. But this one intervention alone goes so much deeper, and looking at the to-do list helps us understand all of the works that need to happen. We'll need a powerful extractor tube to protect the fresco above from steam. We'll also need to bring in water supply and drainage for the dishwasher and the island sink unit. And with the electrics being entrenched throughout, where needed. The kitchen island is positioned to be a dining space on one side, and a great vantage point on the other for anyone hosting guests. Taking a look now from the entrance doorway, we see how the island overlooks a desk and lounge area. The colour palette will complement the kitchen, although take these early furniture renders with a pinch of salt, since each individual piece still needs to be selected. For a final design transition in the room, we scooch over to behind the sofa, looking at how the entrance doorway interacts with the space. Now, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed the closing and opening of various doorways, these works actually happened when we first agreed the purchase deed, because the entire floor of this palace used to be one enormous stately home. You'll see how on our first viewing back in April, the entrance doorway wasn't even originally there. And taking a bird's eye view, we placed a focal point of the TV and a reflective point of the ornate mirror where these two old doorways once stood. The new doorway is counterbalanced by a large plant on the other side of the kitchen, while an additional new doorway leads to one of the bedrooms. And it turned out to be so important to use these structural cues for designing the space. 
The coffee table sits directly in front of the window, with the sofa wrapped proportionally around it. The lines of symmetry from the fresco provide a visual division between kitchen and lounge. While the kitchen itself is entirely symmetrical and set equidistant along the back wall, so as to continue the sense of order and intentionality that a space like this requires. And so we return to this perspective one final time, overlooking a room which does a lot without seeming overcrowded and which adds functionality whilst hopefully making it seem like it's always been there. But there's so much more to think about beyond this one space. The first and second bedrooms need to feel characterful in their own right. Zooming in, we see that its cosy size is amplified by the fantastic natural light, and to the right, the doorway will be opening, which in the past already existed, connecting this space to the fresco room. Transitioning into our design plan, you'll notice that the fewer historical features in this room allows us to introduce more playful and contemporary furniture. The chevron parquet flooring is a feature we'd like to use as a common element between all of the principal rooms, making the jump between spaces less severe. You'll notice a second alcove beside the new doorway, which was also previously a door leading to the fresco room. It seems they used to have a thing for tag team doors back then, but we'll be keeping this alcove bricked up and use it as a space for shelving storage. Finally, having a plain ceiling in this room allows us to make an entire feature wall of the bed headboard without making the room seem too busy. The second smaller bedroom, meanwhile, is accessed directly via the small entrance lobby of the apartment. This time we'll be taking a look at the design transition in reverse, as you'll notice an interesting structural element that we'll be changing to make sure these rooms work as desired. As it currently stands, the first bedroom is only accessible by the doorway in the second bedroom, effectively rendering it into a glorified corridor. Zooming out, you'll now see the logic of making the first bedroom accessible via the fresco room, allowing us to break up the access via the second bedroom, and so making the entire wall usable to host double beds on either side. This overlay of the old floor plan might show a little more clearly how the shifting of just a couple doorways can entirely change the flow and functionality of these spaces. And so, we conclude by looking at the often most overlooked part of any renovation, the ancillary spaces, consisting of two bathrooms and a little outdoor terrace. The larger of the two bathrooms is exclusively used as a sink and shower room. Next to it, and overlooked by the second bedroom, is a small but bright external space, ripe for some TLC. And finally, the WC, connecting from the entrance lobby, also needing a complete overhaul. Now, bathrooms are often a place you can splash out on more daring designs and expensive tiling, since the rooms are often small and aesthetically contained. In fact, tile selection is worthy of a whole video alone, which we're due to dive into shortly as our renovation progresses, so do make sure you're subbed with a bell icon selected not to miss it. We end now by looking at the final structural change that we'll be making to the terrace, which at present is accessed by the long shared corridor that also leads to the other guest apartments. To make this space private to the fresco department, we'll be moving the French doors to where the window of the second bedroom currently is that overlooks it, while converting these existing doors into a large frosted glass window. This new access helps enhance the sense of space that the otherwise quite small second bedroom has, creating a little urban oasis in the middle of this ancient city. And so, good people, tell me, what do you think of our approach to renovation? We've got a long and exciting road ahead of us, with this our biggest challenge yet. Please do tell me your thoughts and ideas, whether they be supportive or critical, and become a part of our little online community of like-minded people who are passionate about all things design, aesthetic, and Italian. And with that, arrivederci dell'Italia, and I'll catch you on the next one.